Hi, welcome to Rancho Corvair. I am Carrie Corvair, proprietor of this fine property in the deep down interior city here in Toronto. This is our little postage stamp of paradise. Gorgeous. Um, two things we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about this guitar, and we're going to talk about how sometimes you acquire guitars in the strangest manner. First, let me preface this by saying I have never owned a new guitar in my life never I have never bought a new guitar and so far even in my advanced years I don't think I'm ever going to because I haven't found the need to for all you Fender aficionados out here this is a uh, mid 80s 84 85 86 87 era Squire bass made in Japan and um, this is when every, like like all you Fender people know that they were having trouble with their quality and their runs and they were getting uh, ripped off by great Japanese copies like Tokai and Ibanez and Aria and what they wanted to do was uh, what they went out and did was bought a factory in uh, Japan and um, the Fuji Gen factory the famous Fuji Gen factory where they make great products and at a certain point what they were making became better than what the Americans were making. I needed a, a separate rig for our practice space so I wouldn't have to go to the practice space to get my rig to take the shows. I had that at home. I wouldn't have to make that extra trip. And I, I believe this was uh, even before I bought things on uh, Craigslist or maybe simultaneously, but I think I found this guy on through the buy and sell newspaper. Remember the buy and sell newspaper? And I called this guy up and it was just a great deal. It was a PV Mark IV head bass players. You know what these are. You know, they're PVs with all, you know, they're, they're rated at two ohms, so they seem more powerful. They have uh, parametric and um, what's the other kind of the EQ? Oh, uh, I'm not sure. Anyway. Geometric? No, not geometric. Anyway, it, it, has, it has the two types of EQ. It had a built-in chorus. It had lots of uh, gizmos and gadgets. And for the time, it was considered a pretty good amp. They are very durable. I never was a PV fan, but he had that and a Yamaha 4x10 cabinet for $200. And I said, man, that's cheap. And I called the guy up. He was a really nice guy. I went to get it. When I got it, everything was in pristine condition, worked great, and I said to him, buddy, it's so cheap, tell me honestly, because I don't want any trouble later on down the road, is this stuff yours or is it stolen? <laughs> and I was serious, I was serious. What year was it? Uh, around 2001. 2001. And you know, Craigslist has, had existed for five years, eBay had existed for five years, but anyway, um, and he assured me that it was his stuff, it was not stolen, and I, and I said, okay, fine, 200 bucks, it's a, it's a, it's a great deal. Great for, great for a practice rig, right? Oh my God. And I took it out to the car and the head was, you know, a large head, it was about, it was about 35, 40 pounds. And I took that out and then we took out the, uh, the cabinet and we put it in the car and he was a really nice guy. He said goodbye, shook his hand, right? And got in my car about to drive away. And then he comes running out of his house, running out and, and he yells, carry, carry, runs out. And he runs out with this guitar. <laughs> And, and he says, listen, I'm just not going to be playing anymore. I'm getting out of the business. Here, take the guitar. What? Exactly. And, I, and, and at the time, you know, you look at it and you see that it's a Squire and you say, well, a cheap, you know, a cheap bass. Uh, it's, it can't hurt to have it around. If it comes to worse, I can always resell it or just have something to, sure. to you know, to, to, to really bang around or just leave at the studio. It wasn't until I got home and I, and I started researching it, saw that it was made in Japan, checked on the serial number, that I realized that it was a highly prized uh, yeah. musical instrument, a real musical instrument. So this is the story of how I got this bass. It was given to me. It was a freebie. Oh my God. And it was just, uh, and I've had it ever since. So it was about um, 
it was let's let's say it's an 85 base it was 16 years old and it's 35 years old now and it's in great shape you can see it's a great grain on the back of the neck yeah. i have never done anything to the neck i've never adjusted the neck I was never a jazz bass guy, I was always a precision bass guy. Then I acquired this and this became the guitar that I that I love to play. I, I developed a feel for these necks as opposed to precision bass necks. And the quality, the fit, the finish, everything about him is great. The uh, one mod I've done on this, as you can see, there's a Leo Kwan Badass 2 Bridge a la Getty Lee. I think these knobs I think I took the old knobs off here and they're on a different guitar. I think these are uh, Stratocaster knobs. Mm -hmm. um, Usually you get a small knob in the third place, right? Yep. Yeah. And that's about it. I never did a, a single thing to that. It's a 20 fret neck, 34 inch scale, standard. There's my uh, signature black nail polish oh, fret can. markers to make it easier to see on stage. You can really see it on that one. Because uh, I need to see those markers on stage. I'm just not that good. Uh, other interesting things about this is this about this here is see this wire here? That's a grounding wire. And they did that. That was the style at the time. It came out of the uh, out of the control cavity, the the gear cavity in the back, and it came out through there. Don't ask me why they did Go that. Go the factory like that? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that's what they. That's, that's kind of weird, eh? Yeah, it is kind of weird. Did they do them like that still? No. No. Oh, weird. No, I don't know why. You know, maybe the it had to do with the shielding in the in the cavity, and that's about it. Wow. it it's a great guitar, really a great guitar. I'm going to play it at practice tonight, even though I really don't yeah. play it as much. more about these any axe dater site uh, on the web will explain the whole transition from American made to Japanese back to American and the Fender saga as it goes on and on and on it's not an uncommon base I think um, at the height of their production in Japan they were making like 14 15,000 of these a year 80% of them were for export 20% were kept in Japan playing this guitar led me to Reverend guitars because my Reverend, American-made Reverend basses have a neck that feels identical to this, mm -hmm. identical. And when I felt those gu guitars, I was sold on them completely because they felt like this. And again, this guitar is so good. This is the standard to which I hold all jazz basses. I go into a music store, I look at other jazz basses. This is the, the one that I think is what a jazz bass is supposed to feel like. And that's about it. That's my gear vlog for today. A great guitar. I'm going to take it to practice tonight, as I said, and I'll play it and we'll hear it a little bit in, in the band uh, setting, in context, during a song.
judgments that they are great guitars. I think they're a little bit overpriced right now. I've, I've seen them going for like a thousand dollars, and you know, for a while I thought this was worth around seven hundred. It's probably somewhere in there. But if you find one that you like, like I say, feel, feel, feel. If you like it, you're gonna buy it. Yeah. Okay, Carrie Cooper out. I'll see you at practice later. Thank you.